Doha is the capital city and most populous city of the state of Qatar. Doha has a population of 956,460 within the city proper. The city is located on the coast of the Persian Gulf in the east of the country. It is Qatar's fastest growing city, with over 40% of the nation's population living in Doha or its surrounding suburbs, and it is also the economic center of the country. It comprises one of the municipalities of Qatar. Doha was founded in the 1820s as an offshoot of al -Bidda. It was officially declared as the country's capital in 1971, when Qatar gained independence. As the commercial capital of Qatar and one of the emergent financial centers in the Middle East, Doha is considered a world city by the Globalization and World Cities Research Network. Doha accommodates Education City, an area devoted to research and education. The city was host to the first ministerial-level meeting of the Doha Development Round of World Trade Organization negotiations. It was also selected as host city of a number of sporting events, including the 2006 Asian Games, the 2011 Pan Arab Games and most of the games at the 2011 AFC Asian Cup. In December 2011, the World Petroleum Council held the 20th World Petroleum Conference in Doha. Additionally, the city hosted the 2012 UNFCCC climate negotiations and is set to host a large number of the venues for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Etymology The name Doha may have originated from the Arabic ad Difar, the big tree. The reference might be to a prominent tree that stood at the site where the original fishing village arose, on the eastern coast of the Qatar Peninsula. Alternatively, it may have been derived from Dohat, Arabic for bay or gulf, referring to the Doha Bay area surrounding the Corniche. History Establishment of al -Bidda, the city of Doha was formed after seceding from another local settlement known as al -Bidda. The earliest documented mention of al -Bidda was made in 1681, by the Carmelite convent, in an account which chronicles several settlements in Qatar. In the record, the ruler and fort in the confines of al -Bidda are alluded to. Karsten Niebuhr, a European explorer who visited the Arabian Peninsula, created one of the first maps to depict the settlement in 1765 in which he labelled it as Gutter. David Seaton, a British political resident in Muscat, wrote the first English record of al -Bidda in 1801. He refers to the town as Bedi and describes the geography and defensive structures in the area. He stated that the town had recently been settled by the Sudan tribe, whom he considered to be pirates. Seaton attempted to bombard the town with his warship, but returned to Muscat upon finding that the waters were too shallow to position his warship within striking distance. In 1820, British surveyor R.H. Colebrook, who visited al -Bidda, remarks on the recent depopulation of the town. He wrote, Gutta, or al Budi, al -Bidda, once a considerable town is protected by two square gurries, forts, near the seashore, but containing no fresh water they are incapable of defense except against sudden incursions of Bedouins. Another gurry is situated two miles inland and has fresh water with it. This could contain 200 men. There are remaining at Al Budi about 250 men, but the original inhabitants, who may be expected to return from Bahrain, will augment them to 900 or 1,000 men, and if the Dozier tribe, who frequent the place as divers, again settle in it, from 600 to 800 men. The same year, an agreement known as the General Maritime Treaty was signed between the East India Company and the sheikhs of several Persian Gulf settlements. It acknowledged British authority in the Persian Gulf and sought to end piracy in the slave trade. Bahrain became a party to the treaty, and it was assumed that Qatar, perceived as a dependency of Bahrain by the British, was also a party to it. Qatar, however, was not asked to fly the prescribed trucial flag. 
as punishment for alleged piracy committed by the inhabitants of Al-Bidda and breach of treaty. An East India Company vessel bombarded the town in 1821. Formation of Doha Doha was founded in the vicinity of Al-Bidda sometime during the 1820s. In January 1823, political resident John McLeod visited Al-Bidda to meet with the ruler and initial founder of Doha, Bahor bin Jubrun who was also the chief of the al Buenain tribe. MacLeod noted that al Bidda was the only substantial trading port in the peninsula during this time. Following the founding of Doha, written records often conflated al Bidda and Doha due to the extremely close proximity of the two settlements. Later that year, L.T. Guy and L.T. Brooks mapped and wrote a description of the two settlements. Despite being mapped as two separate entities, they were referred to under the collective name of al Bidda in the written description. In 1828, Muhammad bin Khamis, a prominent member of the al Buenain tribe and successor of Bahor bin Dubran as chief of al Bidda, was embroiled in controversy. He had murdered a native of Bahrain, prompting the al-Khalifa Sheikh to imprison him. In response, the al Buenain tribe revolted, provoking the al-Khalifa to destroy the tribe's force and evict them to Fuwayrith and Aruiz. This incident allowed the al-Khalifa additional jurisdiction over the town. With essentially no effective ruler, al Bidda and Doha became a sanctuary for pirates and outlaws. In November 1839, an outlaw from Abu Dhabi named Gouletta took refuge in al Bidda, evoking a harsh response from the British. A.H. Not, a British naval commander, demanded that Salemun bin Nazir al Suwadi, chief of the Sudan tribe in al Bidda, take Gouletta into custody and warned him of consequences in the case of non compliance. Al Suwadi obliged the British request in February 1840 and also arrested the pirate Jassim bin Jabir and his associates. Despite the compliance, the British demanded a fine of 300 German kroners in compensation for the damages incurred by pirates off the coast of Al Bidda, namely for the piracies committed by bin Jabir. In February 1841, British naval squadrons arrived in Al Bidda and ordered Al Suwadi to meet the British demand, threatening consequences if he declined. Al Suwadi ultimately declined on the basis that he was uninvolved in bin Jabir's actions. On 26 February, the British fired on Al Bidda, striking a fort and several houses. Al Suwadi then paid the fine in full following threats of further action by the British. Isa bin Tara, a powerful tribal chief from the Al bin Ali tribe, moved to Doha in May 1843. He subsequently evicted the ruling Sudan tribe and installed the Al Mahdid and Al Qari tribes in positions of power. Bin Tara had been loyal to the Al Khalifa, however, shortly after the swearing in of a new ruler in Bahrain, Bin Tara grew increasingly suspicious of the ruling Al Khalifa and switched his allegiance to the deposed ruler of Bahrain, Abdullah bin Khalifa whom he had previously assisted in deposing of. Bin Tara died in the Battle of Fuwayrith against the ruling family of Bahrain in 1847. Arrival of Al Thani The Al Thani migrated to Doha from Fuwayrith shortly after Bin Tara's death in 1847 under the leadership of Muhammad bin Thani. In the preceding years, the Al Thani assumed control of the town. At various times, they swapped allegiances between the two prevailing powers in the area, the Al Khalifa and the Saudis. In 1867, a large number of ships and troops were sent from Bahrain to assault the towns Al Waqra and Doha over a series of disputes. Abu Dhabi joined on Bahrain's behalf due to the conception that al Waqr served as a refuge for fugitives from Oman. Later that year, the combined forces sacked the two Qatari towns with around 2,700 men in what would come to be known as the Qatari-Bahraini War. A British record later stated that the towns of Doha and Waqra were, at the end of 1867, temporarily blotted out of existence. 
the houses being dismantled and the inhabitants deported. The joint Bahraini Abu Dhabi incursion and subsequent Qatari counterattack prompted the British political agent, Colonel Lewis Pelly, to impose a settlement in 1868. Pelly's mission to Bahrain and Qatar and the peace treaty that resulted were milestones in Qatar's history. It implicitly recognized the distinctness of Qatar from Bahrain and explicitly acknowledged the position of Mohammed bin Thani as an important representative of the peninsula's tribes. Shortly after the war, the Ottomans took up a rather nominal control of the country, constructing a base in Doha, with the acquiescence of Jassi Maltani who wished to consolidate his control of the area. Prior to this, the town of Doha served as a stronghold for Bedouin fighters who resisted Ottoman rule. By December 1871, Jassim Altani authorized the Ottomans to send 100 troops and equipment to al Bidr. Disagreement over tribute and interference in internal affairs arose, eventually leading to the Battle of al Wajbar in March 1893. al Bidr fort served as the final point of retreat for Ottoman troops. While they were garrisoned in the fort, their corvette fired indiscriminately at the townspeople, killing a number of civilians. The Ottomans eventually surrendered after Jassi Maltani's troops cut off the town's water supply. An Ottoman report compiled the same year reported that al Bidr and Doha had a combined population of 6,000 inhabitants, jointly referring to both towns by the name of Qatar. Doha was classified as the eastern section of Qatar. The Ottomans held a passive role in Qatar's politics from the 1890s onward until fully relinquishing control during the beginning of the First World War. 20th century Perling had come to play a pivotal commercial role in Doha by the 20th century. The population increased to around 12,000 inhabitants in the first half of the 20th century due to the flourishing pearl trade. A British political resident noted that should the supply of pearls drop, Qatar would practically cease to exist. In 1907, the city accommodated 350 pearling boats with a combined crew size of 6,300 men. By this time, the average prices of pearls had more than doubled since 1877. The pearl market collapsed that year, forcing Jassi Maltani to sell the country's pearl harvest at half its value. The aftermath of the collapse resulted in the establishment of the country's first custom house in Doha. In April 1913, the Ottomans agreed to a British request that they withdraw all their troops from Qatar. Ottoman presence in the peninsula ceased when in August 1915, the Ottoman fort in al Bidr was evacuated shortly after the start of World War I. One year later, Qatar agreed to be a British protectorate with Doha as its official capital. Buildings at the time were simple dwellings of one or two rooms built from mud, stone and coral. Oil concessions in the 1920s and 1930s, and subsequent oil drilling in 1939, heralded the beginning of slow economic and social progress in the country. However, revenues were somewhat diminished due to the devaluation of pearl trade in the Gulf brought on by introduction of the cultured pearl and the Great Depression. The collapse of the pearl trade caused a significant population drop throughout the entire country. It was not until the 1950s and 1960s that the country saw significant monetary returns from oil drilling. Qatar was not long in exploiting the newfound wealth from oil concessions and slum areas were quickly raised to be replaced by more modern buildings. The first formal boys' schools was established in Doha in 1952, followed three years later by the establishment of a girls' school. Historically, Doha had been a commercial port of local significance. However, the shallow water of the bay prevented bigger ships from entering the port until the 1970s when its deep water port was completed. 
Further changes followed with extensive land reclamation, which led to the development Crescent-shaped bay. From the 1950s to 1970s, the population of Doha grew from around 14,000 inhabitants to over 83,000, with foreign immigrants constituting about two-thirds of the overall population. Post-independence Qatar officially declared its independence in 1971, with Doha as its capital city. In 1973, the University of Qatar was opened by Emiri Decree, and in 1975 the Qatar National Museum opened in what was originally the ruler's palace. During the 1970s, all old neighborhoods in Doha were razed and the inhabitants moved to new suburban developments, such as Al Rayyan, Madinat Khalifa and Al Gharifa. The metropolitan area's population grew from 89,000 in the 1970s to over 434,000 in 1997. Additionally, land policies resulted in the total land area increasing to over 7,100 hectares by 1995, an increase from 130 hectares in the middle of the 20th century. In 1983, a hotel and conference center was developed at the north end of the Corniche. The 15-story Sheraton Hotel structure in this center would serve as the tallest structure in Doha until the 1990s. In 1993, the Qatar Open became the first major sports event to be hosted in the city. Two years later, Qatar stepped in to host the FIFA World Youth Championship, with all the matches being played in Doha-based stadiums. The Al Jazeera Arabic news channel began broadcasting from Doha in 1996. In the late 1990s, the government planned the construction of Education City, a 2,500-hectare Doha-based complex mainly for educational institutes. Since the start of the 21st century, Doha attained significant media attention due to the hosting of several global events and the inauguration of a number of architectural mega-projects. One of the largest projects launched by the government was the Pearl Qatar, an artificial island off the coast of West Bay which launched its first district in 2004. In 2006, Doha was selected to host the Asian Games, leading to the development of a 250-hectare sporting complex known as Aspire Zone. During this time, new cultural attractions were constructed in the city, with the older ones being restored. In 2006, the government launched a restoration program to preserve Souq O'Keefe's architectural and historical identity. Parts constructed after the 1950s were demolished whereas older structures were refurbished. The restoration was completed in 2008. Katara Cultural Village was opened in the city in 2010 and has hosted the Doha Tribeca Film Festival since then. Geography Doha is located on the central east portion of Qatar, bordered by the Persian Gulf on its coast. It is bordered by Al Waqra Municipality to the south, Al Rayyan Municipality to the west, Al Dayen Municipality to the north, and Um Salah Municipality to the northwest. Its elevation is 10 meters. Doha is highly urbanized. Land reclamation off the coast has added 400 hectares of land and 30 kilometers of coastline. Half of the 22 square kilometers of surface area which Hamad International Airport was constructed on was reclaimed land. The geology of Doha is primarily composed of weather-done conformity on the top of the Eocene period Dammam formation, forming dolomitic limestone. The Pearl is an artificial island in Doha with a surface area of nearly 400 hectares. The total project has been estimated to cost $15 billion upon completion. Other islands off Doha's coast include Palm Tree Island, Shreyos Island, Al Safia Island, and Alia Island. Climate Doha has a hot desert climate. Summer is very long, from May to September, when its average high temperatures surpass 38 degrees Celsius and often approach 45 degrees Celsius. Humidity is usually the lowest in May and June. 
dew points can surpass 25 degrees Celsius in the summer. Throughout the summer, the city averages almost no precipitation, and less than 20 mm during other months. Rainfall is scarce, at a total of 75 mm per annum, falling on isolated days mostly between October to March. Winters are warm and the temperature rarely drops below 7 degrees Celsius. Demographics A significant portion of Qatar's population resides within the confines of Doha and its metropolitan area. The district with the highest population density is the central area of Al Najada, which also accommodates the highest total population in the country. The population density across the Greater Doha region ranges from 20,000 people per square kilometer to 25 people per square kilometer. The following table is the total population of the wider Doha metropolitan area. The following table is a breakdown of registered live births by nationality and sex for Doha. Places of birth are based on the home municipality of the mother at birth. Ethnicity and languages The population of Doha is overwhelmingly composed of expatriates, with Qatari nationals forming a minority. The largest portion of expatriates in Qatar are from Southeast and South Asian countries, mainly India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Philippines, Bangladesh, and Indonesia, with large numbers of expatriates also coming from the Levant Arab countries, North Africa, and East Asia. Doha is also home to a large number of expatriates from Europe, North America, South Africa, and Australia. Arabic is the official language of Qatar. English is commonly used as a second language, and a rising lingua franca, especially in commerce. As there is a large expatriate population in Doha, languages such as Tagalog, Spanish, French, and Hindi are widely spoken. In 2004, the Foreign Ownership of Real Estate Law was passed, permitting non-Qatari citizens to buy land in designated areas of Doha, including the West Bay Lagoon, the Qatar Pearl, and the new Lusail City. Prior to this, expatriates were prohibited from owning land in Qatar. Ownership by foreigners in Qatar entitles them to a renewable residency permit, which allows them to live and work in Qatar. Each month, thousands immigrate to Qatar, and as a result, Doha has witnessed explosive growth rates in population. Doha's population currently stands at around 1 million, with the population of the city more than doubling from 2000 to 2010. Due to the high influx of expatriates, the Qatari housing market saw a shortage of supply which led to a rise in prices and increased inflation. The gap in the housing market between supply and demand has narrowed, however, and property prices have fallen in some areas following a period which saw rents triple in some areas. According to Qatar Chamber, expatriate workers have remitted $60 billion between 2006 and 2012. India was the top destination of the remittances, followed by the Philippines, while the US, Egypt and the neighboring UAE trailed. Religion The majority of residents in Doha are Muslim. Catholics account for over 90% of the 150,000 Christian population in Doha. Following decrees by the Emir for the allocation of land to churches, the first Catholic church, Our Lady of the Rosary, was opened in Doha in March 2008. The church structure is discreet and Christian symbols are not displayed on the outside of the building. Several other churches exist in Doha, including the Siro Malabar Church, Malankara Orthodox Church, Marthomev Church, CSI Church, Siro Malankara Church and the Pentecostal Church. A majority of mosques are either Muwahid or Sunni-oriented.